Machine. Hello and welcome to Hot Pod Time Machine. I'm your host, Claire Lim, or We Claire, and I'm joined today by the wonderful Devra Wild, who plays Lazelle in Baldur's Gate 3. Hello. Uh, it's so lovely to see you, Dev. It's lovely nice. to see you. You're here. Yeah, and I'm in yeah. LA and you're in the UK. So we're quite far yes. away. Well, actually, we're in space right now, according to your lovely background. Yes, we have met up love in it. space. That's I exactly. really love it. It's very calming. It is, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot a lot of the guests that have been on in the past have start sort of they drift off and go, Your background's really nice. Like, it is quite mesmerizing. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, Dev, you know that the theme of the podcast is a decision from your past that changed your future. And that can be mm -hmm. anything big or small. So let's start with that then. Have you thought of something? I have. I have thought of something um, because I think it has affected the trajectory the trajectory of my life significantly. And, it, and also it's quite like unexpected. Um, it was it was when I decided to pursue uh, well not not necessarily even pursue but like to 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 try uh, voice acting and I'd been an actor for like six years at that point um, and it was it was honestly so random and so like insignificant almost and now when you look back on it you're like whoa if I hadn't done that you know all of these amazing things wouldn't have happened. And it was literally me. I like I looked up some agents. I had my voice reel uh, already, and I just like sent off some stuff. But I, I, it was just, it was just one of those things, you know. It's on your to do list, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Oh, okay, it's done. And like, if nothing comes of it, it's I'm fine. I don't really, I don't really mind that much. It was just one of those things. And now when I look back on it, and I'm like, wow, okay. But isn't that like that's the best things happen like that? I think. Absolutely. When you really have like no agenda, you're not, yeah, you're not putting anything on it. You're just putting it out into the world and, you know, whatever happens, happens. So I, I love stuff like that, like just stuff that flows and, and easy stuff, you know? I find, like, I think, especially now as I get older, uh, but I find that when I was younger, I don't know about you, but I used to really think of goals and I would almost not claw at them desperately but there's like an energy about being younger especially Absolutely. in this business and now I've started to think maybe it's a midlife crisis I did turn 40 last year but like I am starting to think yeah you know what like I'm just gonna try and let things happen do you find that yeah. as you get on with your career as well that your your mindset has changed I mean it's really oh it's hard isn't it because when you're not setting goals and when you're be, you know, when you're being that like chill, like in your mindset, like what you're kind of saying, it's very easy to feel like you're standing still and you're not doing anything, you're not being proactive enough. And everyone's like, you know, because obviously we've got the internet now. So that makes me sound old. We have the internet the now. We didn't have that back in my day. <laughs> you know, we didn't have like so much access to it, back, you know, back when I was growing up. And now that you're kind of surrounded by it, so much like noise and it's like, you should be proactive. You should be doing a workshop. You should be doing this, you should be doing that. Whereas in reality, like actually it's so much more powerful to be like super targeted, focus on one thing, do that thing to the best of your ability. And, and then know that you don't have to constantly be in this like rat race kind of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, in terms of my mindset, I don't know. I think I sort of shift between the two, between being like super, uh, intense about like my goals but then I, I'm the same as you I think if I do it that way and I I start to like it's that desperate energy that really doesn't serve me yeah. um and then sometimes I'm just like you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let stuff happen and then shockingly shock horror that's when things do sort of flow why is that because I find that it's the same with love or whatever else especially yeah. when you're single oh my god Absolutely. and you're going oh my god it's been 84 years you know you're just like god but then all of a sudden you let everything go yeah people step in what is it do you believe it's the universe do you believe it's just your own energy do you have a belief system around that oh uh, i mm. What is it? I don't I don't know what it is exactly, but 
but it definitely seems to be a universal thing because everyone's experienced this this phenomenon phenomenon haven't they so like when you yeah when you let everything go and you know and and things usually that's when they happen so uh, I guess yeah the universe um this whole thing of like what's not you know what what's meant to be for you what what's that word uh, what's that phrase what's, what's meant for, for you what... won't pass you by that's it that's it yeah, yeah. so I don't know what exactly it is that I that I believe because I used to do a lot of stuff about um manifestation and and all of that and that didn't I didn't find that super useful but that undercurrent of letting things go and um and putting them out into the universe letting things go that's like a pillar of you know manifestation blah blah and that's a really good like takeaway um and just kind of being in this zone of like okay you know if it doesn't happen then obviously it wasn't meant to be or uh and if it does then great I haven't like had to desperately sort of go for it um but it is a weird thing because I think that if you talk to any person across any culture in any part of the world I am positive that this is something that we'll all have in common this kind of experience of of um yeah just just taking the foot off the pedal and um and then having this thing that we really want actually actually come to us and then obviously obviously you see the opposite is true so much as well when you're really uh sort of clawing for something and you're really going for something and then it, it doesn't work out and I think in the moment you can be like ah oh, god that's so bad but I always just like to think like rejection is redirection and um you know it, it's really hard though to think like that but I think when you look back on it it takes a bit of time but when you look back on it you will find that usually it's been for the best you're right I like that rejection is redirection mm. which is something that I do remember but sometimes you forget have you ever have you ever forgotten that mantra because it's very easy to get caught up in wanting a thing like has there ever been a time where you in your career where you know it, the whole what's good for you won't pass you by you wanted that good thing and it did pass you by was there any a, a, a point where you so went, oh, many. Went that and it passed you oh yeah so many like so every like audition I get you know um especially if it's for if it's for a big show say that I've watched and that I admire with a director or something I mean you always think I think as an actor you're always like this is it this is my big moment this is my big break this is this is what it's all been leading up to here we go here we go and then obviously what happens is you put pressure on yourself you probably don't do a very good job in the audition and then inevitably it doesn't it doesn't work out but then you're always like why you know why and uh yeah so many times I think every single time I have an, an audition I'm just like this is it this is it and that's such a bad way to think as well though isn't it because like what what does it mean like this is it like uh, what you know what does that even mean um I, you know sometimes I just think like I'm just so lucky to be working actually and to be making all you know making my whole career from acting because at one point that was my that was my goal like I didn't really care what kind of acting I was doing or what I was doing but I was like you know what I just want to get to the stage where I am uh I'm making a career out of acting I don't have to do any other jobs but it's funny because when you get that goal you're kind of like oh great okay I've done that okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do the next thing now and you sort of you sort of um well, I, I think I appreciate it but almost like I'm looking to the next thing and to the next thing and I guess a lot of people are like that but um yeah that's what it's we just, do as humans uh, though we're always you know, we're never satisfied satisfied and we're always thinking about the negative things that happen and you know to oh, stop yeah. and be to to practice gratitude and go you know what I did all right there you know and we I don't do right. that yeah um yeah. I, I wanted to talk about the the fact that you know you're talking about auditioning and you know I, I'm the same uh, there's been times where I've stood on a stage doing stand-up or I've auditioned for a thing and my obsession or my head or whatever it is has got in the way I haven't done a good gig or whatever or it's not been a good interview um but I was watching something with I think it was Jesse Eisenberg that was it he was talking about anxiety and he seems like quite an anxious actor the way he acts yeah He's quite totally squirrely, anxious he uses it he said and I and Emma Stone said something similar that they use anxiety as an energy and they don't try and make it go away they actually use it 
Would you agree with that? Or what do you think they meant by that? I mean, I think uh, I, I think there's something to be said for, yeah, not not blocking the feelings, not blocking the bad feelings and like just being like, I just want to have positive vibes and I just want to be like happy all the time. Because if you do that, obviously, yeah, things are going to build up and then you're going to be completely, you know, you're probably not going to be in a very good place when that sort of, it, it all overflows. Um, but it's hard, isn't it? Because we don't want to go to those places. We don't want to be... Uh, depressed or sad or or anxious or any of those things um but there is something to be said isn't it for just letting it wash over you or just experiencing it and I think one of my drama like one of my acting teachers said something really um good which was something about you know you're put on this earth to experience the full spectrum of human emotions otherwise like what are you you know why are you here you know, is would you wouldn't you just get bored if you were just like happy all the time and yeah. and, and all of that stuff? So I really do agree with that. And for sure, then and yeah, if you can bring it into your acting and your characters, I mean, even better. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the great thing about acting uh, is the fact comedy or whatever it may be. When you get to perform, you get to experience or convey emotions that we are told that aren't right. In the in normal okay. society, you can't shout at someone or call them an idiot or or laugh inappropriately or cry, you know. And yeah. I do feel that everyone once should take at least one acting class or one class where you get to do that. What is it about acting then now at this age that you love the most? Do you still love being able to do that and release? And what is it you release from yourself? Yeah, I think it's everything you said. Like it's so cathartic, isn't it? Like for me, it's cathartic. I mean, I know people are terrified of of public speaking and 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 being. I suppose it's terrified of being vulnerable in front of other people. I think that's what scares a lot of people. Um, but that's what also scares me. I mean, that's for me. That's really quite hard as an actor. I find it quite easy to um, be like funny or goofy and stuff, but I don't find it very easily to be uh, maybe totally like vulnerable. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I just love the, yeah, that kind of thing of letting out those emotions in a, I guess, in a safe space, being able to express, being able to express yourself, mm. being able to like, just be completely free, um, of being able to be with another human being and have that, like, you know, that synergy and that interaction, that kind of magic that comes alive when you're, when you're in a scene. And, and like you said, you can say all those things, you can do all those things and it's, um, it just feels so, you know, when you've done a really good scene, it just feels so good. It just feels like energizing. I, I can't really explain it in any other way. It just, um, it it's it's just a buzz. I think like like nothing else. So that's what I love about it, um, and what I've always loved about it. To be honest, um, yeah. it's just a shame. I think that what you realize is that sort of ninety percent of the job is. Um, actually the business side of it and 10% of the job is probably all of that good stuff and uh and that can be a bit disheartening and, and difficult at times um because they don't really tell you that I think or when you see like actors it looks so glamorous uh but actually it's it's really not at all <laughs> no, no. and then no. no I would say or are you tell me actually being in the you know being an actor would you say that a lot of younger actors have it maybe harder in a way because we have TikTok, we have Instagram. Um, there are people putting things up there, from my perspective, um, there are people pushing things up there where they're great at short form, but they can't maybe have a long conversation. You know, there are mm. skills that you have to learn that are not social media skills, you know, but then there's things that they can do I can't do. Would you say it's the same for acting that's harder now? There's it's too over it's oversaturated that kind yeah of thing. I, I yeah I don't know I'm one of those people that always thinks like oh it was better you know it was probably better before even though I have no idea what it was like to be an, an actor say in the you know in the 90s uh, or anything like that but I, I I've I've read interviews and stuff with with actors that were sort of up and coming at that time and they were all like it was a lot I can't remember someone very famous actually recently 
and it's a shame I can't remember the name, but it was some Hollywood a actress, I think. And, and she was saying, God, I, it was so much easier before uh, because, you know, it was just, you've got your headshot and your resume and everything was in hard copy. You didn't really have the internet. And, you know, you you go into town and you send, just give your stuff in or your agent does it and, and kind of, and that's it. And now it's kind of exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's very oversaturated. I think there's so many, not only drama schools, but drama courses, all of that coming together, people from all over the world now with self-taping, you know, that's obviously completely opened up the the whole thing. So uh, for a role, obviously it doesn't really matter anymore where you're located. And then and then you've got the whole social media thing, of course, which um, which is, yeah, a blessing and a curse, I suppose, because from one from one hand, you can take back control. You can you can put up your stuff and actually do very well from it and and you know probably make get people to notice you. I think that's half the battle is getting people to notice you. So that sounds so bad as well, I think, because everyone's like, oh, it's all about the craft. Like, it's all about the craft. But it is, but you can be the most talented person in the world, but if nobody knows, then it's like pointless, isn't it? So the social media is good for that. But then, yeah, I know what you mean about this kind of short form thing. being It's very specific and it's, I don't know if it's, easier well it's a different skill isn't it it's a very different skill to them being uh at the national uh seven times or eight times a week doing two shows a day whatever however many shows you're doing and sustaining that for like a, a, a three-hour show or something like this a different skill um i i do think though that you know whatever you've got at your disposal use it um you know if you're good at doing those tiktok things and um and, and doing sketches on there and brilliant. I mean, I laugh so much with people because, and then sometimes I think, God, I never would have, um, I probably never would have seen those people if it wasn't for TikTok actually. So it's quite, it is quite good. It is quite good, but it's just, yeah, lots of, lots of pros and cons. I wish I could, I wish I could go in your hot pod time machine and go back <laughs> in time and, and see what it was like to be, you know, to be an actor say in the eighties and the nineties when social media news really weren't a thing. And, and just to sort of experience that. Yeah, that's right. I I, th I feel like that sometimes as well. I wonder what it'd be like to be doing my thing, you know, 30 years ago or, or yeah. 30 more, you know, and it would then have to be how uh, kind of like enthusiastic you are, how talented, pure talent, you know, like not saying that people on social media aren't. I never, I'm really careful to trash that because I think it's a very specific skill um that I don't really have um but yeah I don't know like I think sometimes I would say even to younger people now like numbers are not everything and you can have all the numbers in the world but you might just stay there you know numbers plus talent that would be amazing but talent is the most important thing you know so um that's what I feel it's a balance you're right I'm very Libran so I'm trying to be very balanced about all this right now I'm like are you Libra? yes I am <laughs> me too oh high five yeah I knew there was a reason why I liked you Deb <laughs> oh yeah so we're in the band's star sign not biased at all I know oh god said like true Librans I know oh. <laughs> I can always tell a Libra there's like it's uh not not to kind of like big us up too much but there's no like please a, go ahead it's chattiness but it's not like you know whatever there's always like a balance there and there's always like a i don't know it's just the way in which librans talk to one another or talk to people it's like you're trying to be friendly and open and not give too much away but be pleasant and be nice <laughs> like that's what it's my yeah, whole life classic, Dev. Oh, classic libra <laughs> classic, classic. Libra. Let's go back to, you know, the decision that you talked about. It was deciding to go into voice acting. Where I wanted to ask you because voice actors are actors, you know, you're it's acting, yeah. um, and I think people try and separate the two. And you have to be a good actor, you know, to be a good voice actor. Absolutely, actor. you have to remember that, um, folks out there. But I, I wanted to ask you as an actor going into that world. Was there something that you learned when you just when you went into voice acting that surprised you as an actor, or was it quite easy for you? I mean, it's easy in the sense that it seems to come quite naturally to me. I don't have to think too much about like 
uh, I don't have to think too much about it, I suppose, because of exactly what you said, which is I'm an actor first and foremost. So whether that is doing just the voice and you can't see my face or whether it's doing the whole thing, uh, it's not so different. Um, I mean, I do think that the voice um, you can get away with uh, being slightly bigger uh, in terms of a character. And sometimes you have to be uh, because you're, you're only selling it with your voice. And, you know, people will be like, you know, you'll see the cut, the breakdowns and they'll be like, yeah, no, we want this to be like super sort of natural and that's fine. But then you have to find that kind of natural, but also big enough to sell it. But I never really had a, a, an issue with that. But I suppose what I learned um, is really, uh, and I'm still learning actually, how much you can really use your voice and your tone and your really just this part of you to to tell this story and it's quite incredible I mean um there are some people that can really manipulate their voices and and play like children and grandmas and and well you know old people and and all that and that's that's incredible I can't quite go to those um extremes but isn't it just amazing that you can even just changing your tone slightly dropping your voice raising your voice doing all that can really create a, a completely different character and, and I suppose I never really appreciated that so much and it's just it's really cool I, it's I, really I've cool. got all I mean I interview um folks that are doing voices for games and things all the time and you know I I love hearing the creativity behind voice acting as a craft in itself I think it's very it goes under the radar a lot of the time, you know, uh, oh, yeah, in, yeah. in the wider sense. I think people who are gamers and, and people who love animation, they can appreciate it. But there should be lots more awards and lots more recognition for those. Because when you you see someone and then you hear their voice in a thing, I'm like, wow, the creativity behind that. Like, what were you thinking? Like, how do you access that part of your your voice? Like, going deep or going sexy is quite difficult it's not as easy as just making a fun voice no no it's not easy and, and it's weird it is weird that there's this disconnect behind like if somebody uh, has been in a huge film uh, or tv show usually that person becomes famous you know quote unquote you know they'll be doing press they'll be doing, you'll see their face everywhere um and then but then with with somebody that's been in a huge video game for example or a huge animation or cartoon or anything like that it's like it doesn't really people don't really care about that mm -hmm. so much the behind the person behind the voice and I'm, I'm not sure why that really is I suppose it's just a, a historical thing that's always been like that but there is this sense of like oh the actor is just doing the voice the actor is hidden so so he or she shall remain hidden uh, forever and you will never know that person apart from when you hear their voice doing a character it's very it is weird yeah. it is it is strange because when you think about the fact that say the gaming industry is bigger than a Hollywood mm -hmm. and it's it's a huge industry um it's just a weird yeah very very strange very strange to me but yeah it would be nice to get more recognition wouldn't it a few it more awards. Oscars. Too much to ask, is it? <laughs> Oscars? Hey, uh, Oscars people, uh, you know, devs just want a, just a nomination. Just Listen, just just invite me and don't make it a separate ceremony to the other Oscars. Yeah, make it like a proper, <laughs> I want to be there with, you know, Jennifer Lawrence and Meryl Streep and all of those lot, okay? Look, she wants her red carpet moment, you guys. Just all right. let me have it. <laughs> Just let, let me have it, okay. Let you me know, have it. Put me in the glam box. I want to do that <laughs> thing where they're like swishing around. I've always wanted to do that, but then I thought, oh. what would I do? <laughs> like, I know. We listen. You've got. We've got time to plan now. Okay. A little right. bit of time until cool. we get invited to the thing. Yes, and we will be seeing each other at uh, a convention or two this year. So well. maybe we could. I'm trying to think how we could get to do our own swivel cam thing we'll, we can try and work it out i don't know because it goes really it's like super slow motion isn't it yes i don't know how we do it let's try it i'm gonna we'll try Google it diy part. slow mo swivel cam and we can like practice <laughs> yeah if they don't if, listen if they won't bring it to us we will bring it to them we will 100%. make our 
in the middle Build of it. a convention. <laughs> like, let's just make yeah, it happen. Um, yeah. But you know what? The, we were talking about recognition. Like, gaming communities are mad. They're mad in a lovely way because they're so excited and excitable. And I, as I, I wanted to ask you, playing Lazel, oh, actually, some of my community on Twitch uh, calls Lazel Bazel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I Classic probably... Bay. Classic um, you are a favorite. I've been told I need to romance you. Um, <laughs> I'm like, sure. <laughs> like, that's, yes, I mean, you do. I think, I think we're going that way, Dev. I'm just. Yeah, we are. I think we're, Good. we're going okay. that way. So, like, Enjoy. I think it's going to happen. Um, you've already told me you like my scent. It's Mark Jacobs, by the way. Oh, lovely, lovely. Well, I think we're heading in the right direction. Just make sure you don't, you know, don't have eyes for anyone else because Lazel doesn't love that. Oh, um, okay. mm, I see. Okay, I'll I'll see what I can do. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. My only problem opinion. with the Lazel thing is like she seems a bit bossy. I like to be in charge. So, well, listen. Let Let's just say you might work out a little compromise. Okay, all right, okay. I'm intrigued now. Crap, okay, God, you're really, you're really driving a hard bargain here. There are others in line. I'm just telling you, there are others, yeah. but okay, all right, we'll see. Shut up, uh, is it? Is it? <laughs> it's definitely, I, I've decided not, no to Astarian. Sorry, Neil, but I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> like, no. And I'm not sure, like, Shadowheart's very sweet. I'm not, I've not decided yet. I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure. I can be swayed. I can be sweet. We'll see. You can be. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask for on a human level. You've been asked all the questions about Baldur's Gate three, all the questions about Lazelle, but as Dev the person, how does it feel or did it feel when all of a sudden, almost overnight, this game comes out? Your social media is probably going like this over over weeks. Like, is it scary? Is it I mean, in a good way? bad way like how did you feel oh it's it's fun do you know what everyone's been really really nice with with a with a few exceptions on youtube i think youtube's just a bit of a funny space to be honest youtube's a bit funny but but everywhere else uh i i haven't had any you know any people being weird or, or negative or anything like that so it's just been a bit of um. It was kind of surprising actually, because obviously we, we worked on this game for four years. You you know it becomes like you you sort of your regular job, and and you you, and I didn't know a lot about the game before the games became before. I didn't know how much this was anticipated, and I don't think anyone really expected the reaction because I think you know as happens with sort of beloved um games uh people kind of a bit like oh go on then can you can you actually live up to our expectations can you <laughs> and then you know it's that kind of vibe isn't it which obviously I had no idea about so that's why I wasn't I wasn't expecting anything I I um I just decided to start to make some videos um on TikTok about uh just a bit more about I because I was doing all sorts of different things on TikTok and I was like you know I, I really I'm an actor so I really want to talk a bit more about acting and and make that you know this the focus of this TikTok. Otherwise, I was doing stuff about like pregnancy and stuff, which was fine because I was pregnant before then. But you know, I was like, I really want to do something that's kind of related to my career. And and I was like, oh, I don't think anyone's going to watch this. I don't think anyone on TikTok really is going to. And then it turns out that loads of people were super interested in it and and stuff like that. And so it's been it's been it's been cool. It's been unexpected, which again is like the best thing, isn't it? Circling back to our thing at the beginning. When you don't expect it, you you just you're just kind of like, great. You just otherwise, if you're there, like, oh my god, this game is gonna be like the biggest game of my life, and I'm gonna get so famous, and everyone, and and then it's never gonna happen like the way you think it is. So, yeah, it's just a lesson in having zero expectations. Expect nothing, and then you will be, I mean, more than pleasantly surprised. It's Absolutely. been, it's been really good. yeah. I think regardless of. If Baldur's Gate three had taken off or not, or if if you had got this job or not, I think I'll, again this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with expectation. I think when I was younger, I would go, "I want this job, so I get this." Or is that like this one's the one? What does that mean, you know? And so I think as an actor, or when you're working in the entertainment industry, I mean, am I I just want to pay the rent and bills. I mean, that's, that's, literally, it. that's literally it I want to have a nice time and yeah. work consistently and have a nice life yeah. and be able to like 
you know what? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think you're totally right. Sometimes I think we're really overcomplicated. It's like, I want to be able to go to the supermarket and buy what I want, right? And have whatever I want to eat and have like nice food. I want to be able to go on holiday. Don't need anything crazy, but I do like, you know, I like to travel. So I want to be able to go on holiday, you know, uh, obviously provide for my child, um, live in a live in a semi-decent space that I like. And, and you know, it's actually quite, I mean, now, all of that stuff is, is a lot but actually when you when you think about it it's quite simple it's not like we're not asking for the for the world and actually if you can if you can look back and, and you can sit back and be like oh actually I have all those things so I'm already there I'm already you know I've already got the more than the basics covered anything else on top is is just a bonus really but but we don't think like that I mean I don't think like that most of the time sometimes I sit back and I'm like just hold your horses, Deb. Yeah. Hold your horses and think and look and zoom out of it. Um, but most of the time I'm just like, that's the next thing. That's the next thing. Um, so I've just got to, I don't know, I've got to try and like, you know, it's a work in progress, isn't it? But I think a lot of that, I don't know about you, but for me, a lot of like, when's the next thing? It's because I genuinely love working. Um, yeah. I genuinely, I love being weird and creative. And when I'm not doing those things, I feel like I'm dead, I'm dead inside. Nobody loves me anymore and I hate myself. Like, do you I feel do. like that when there's a vacuum? Are you like, I'm dead? What do you do when there's a vacuum? How do you keep your brain from going crazy? Probably making TikToks um, because I think it is a good way to have fun and, and, uh, and be creative without any real pressure um you don't have you don't have to necessarily create a set and do you know your hair and makeup you can literally just be like weird and funny in in 15 seconds so I like that um I like doing that uh but it's tough I don't I honestly don't know the answer to that question um exercise try and do a bit of exercise like I'm not I'm not a crazy exerciser I'm not a massive fan of it actually but I think it does help to be outside and to and to and to realize that there are other things aside from your career um and 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 you know just yeah going on adventures wherever those adventures might be traveling or or just seeing friends and just kind of getting away from this whole thing of like oh i'm not working now i'm not working i'm not working because that gets really that gets really tough so yeah but but again uh, uh, i would say what was it some actor said that again was really really i thought that was so, so such a good way of putting it um you're paid to audition you do the acting for free mm -hmm. yes. um and 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 i think along that same in that same vein is like you, you're sort of you're sitting around for a lot of it um waiting for the opportunity and then you're sort of you know showing what you can do and hopefully getting the job and I know that sounds bad I know a lot of people don't like this whole concept of like well you shouldn't wait you shouldn't wait around you should do it but and I agree with that I agree you should be proactive but also now we're getting this thing of uh, it's becoming a little bit destructive this whole thing of um be proactive be proactive be proactive like I think there really needs to be a, a balance yeah. because otherwise when you do have those vacuums when you're not doing anything uh I start to feel like, um, well, that's not right. Why am I not? I should be. I should be doing something. Anything. What should I be doing? And then you, and then you lose the ability to switch off. You lose the ability to like enjoy time with your family or your friends because you're constantly thinking. And it's just, it's not, it's not healthy. No, it's not. Um, I start. I'm not going to name names. Um, people that follow me or I follow them on Instagram, I just start muting people when I get, because sometimes it's not that anybody does anything wrong. Everyone's doing what they need to do on there. But there are times where I'm like, oh, I should be doing that. Oh, yeah. why am I not working? And it's not their fault. That's the name of the game. That's what society and especially social media and modern society has told us to do we are hamsters on a wheel and if the wheel slows down we're dead you know and it's not that because I constantly think that when I see someone doing a similar job doing something sort of in the same realm and I'm quiet for two three months I'm like oh no I failed I'm, I'm a failure and it's, yeah. it's sad that we think like that but you know it's something that 
it would have killed me more 20 years ago now I'm a bit older I'm like trying I kind of try and do yoga or do something else but now that you're a mother um I mean what you know what kind of lessons would you want to give your wee one you know as a a working person when they're older because my parents just told me work hard work 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 they really oh <laughs> mine too yeah yeah Boomers. I know and, <laughs> uh, yeah I do you know what sometimes I think I, I look back on it I, I don't not even from like the baby's perspective but sometimes I look back from like my perspective and I'm thinking god if when you know when all this is done <laughs> sounds really like bad but you know when you're sort of at the end of your life and you're looking back and I don't think you're going to be even if even if I was to become an Oscar winning actress you know the next Meryl Streep like realistically would I look back on my life and be like that that is the thing that yes I'm so glad I achieved that I don't think you would I think that you'd really look at the the little things the yeah the the family you've created or and the friends that you have and the little moments and those just like fun things that you've done like the simple things and the laughter and and all of that so I just said yeah work hard is great I mean of course I but I think more than more than that it's not about working hard it's about doing things to the best of your ability because then you've you've done all that you can within your control um and then that's another thing I'd say another lesson would be like uh think about you know if you have a life situation change the things you can change if you can and then the things that you can't then leave those you you, you can't worry about things that you have absolutely no control over and unfortunately we are in an industry as you well know that we have very little control over so that's quite hard I think if you are a bit if you are someone that likes control um it is quite hard and I think that's why circling back to what we started with um is why a lot of chill people or people that at least seem very chill actually do quite well in this industry um because they uh they can sort of sit back and and they don't need to worry about all that they kind of like you know what I did my best and um I'm gonna let it you know I did my best in this audition that's it's up to them now just leave it it's fine are you chill Devra are you chill I oh I vary a lot I don't sometimes I can be um I think most if I had to if you had to like if I had to give you a defining answer right now I'd probably say no I think I'm chill as like I'm chill as like a, a friend and uh in like my sort of personal life but I'm very chill in my career I'm not I'm a bit on the hamster wheel I'm just like nah, 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 nah. yeah same. what am I doing what am I doing and then like, as, a, as a woman I think you're always thinking about time as well which is stupid you're always like well I'm I should have achieved this by this age and then oh you're getting older I'm getting older and it's just like oh you know it's like non-stop mm. it's just all these things you know just going off in your head which um and that particular one, I, I don't know if men can relate to that one. Because I feel like as a guy, you know, the older you get, it's almost like the better you are. It's like, that's the thing, isn't it? Women get worse with age and men get better with age. That's what we've been told, which is obviously bollocks. But um, but that, but it is ingrained in you and you kind of do think about it. So it is um, lots, lots going on. I, you know <laughs> what? I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you more about the, just the age thing very quickly because... Um, I th I've had those thoughts as I hurtled. So I, oh, during COVID, I was in my late thirties, kind of in there, and I thought, oh no, this is it. Oh, my contracts are dead. And I had to start again at that point a little bit, and then, and then a lot of personal things happened to me, breakups and things like that. And then I moved, moved country, and I at forty, you know, and it's a it's a very strange feeling like at one part of me doesn't want to keep saying I'm 40 because when you say it um and I say it in my stand-up people come up to me afterwards and they go well done like I'm dead <laughs> I've had well done you look so good I'm like wow yeah I'm not dead like I know and it's it's not old um and I was I I'm doing an improv class at the moment 
I've become an LA wanker. Basically, I'm doing all the classes <laughs> now. I'm loving it. What? So I've been doing an improv class, and there's um, naturally I've kind of found the people that are my age. There's two girls, one in her late thirties, another in her mid forties. I'm assuming, uh, but we all don't look it. And they said, "Oh God, you're really brave about saying that you're forty. And I was like, "We're women." And I was like, I don't often say we're women, but I try to just exist and I exist. But I said to them, we have to, in this industry, be proud of our age because we yeah. are not old. How do you feel about that? I don't know how old you are, Devin. I'm not going to ask. But how do you feel as you're getting on? Do you think it's important for us to actually just say, I'm a mother? I'm this age, you know? I think we should. I, I think we should. I don't. I certainly don't yeah hide the fact that yeah I'm a mother or, or whatever because I mean yeah mothers can be any age any whatever it doesn't matter but but um yeah yeah because I think before it was sort of like oh if you if you weren't in your 20s then you know once you hit sort of 25 Hollywood's like bye bye I don't want to see you anymore and luckily now you know that is one good thing that's come of you know, when we're talking about, oh, would it be better to have been an actress in the 90s or the 80s? Probably not in terms of age, because, um, because yeah, I think it was, and, and still is maybe to some extent, but, but it's getting better now in terms of not being ageist and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, fuck yeah, I think we should be proud and, and like, who cares? Who cares? No, at the end of normalize the day. it. Normalize. Stupid. Older. It's the number. It's the number, and it doesn't really correspond to anything because they're like you said, some people don't look their age. And what does a forty-year-old even look like? What? I look, what is no. it even, you just it. It's so, so. It's so different for everyone. We all we all act very differently now. It's a different time. Um, it's. I mean, yeah. It's. It's a. Yeah. We yeah. shouldn't, we shouldn't be ashamed of stuff like that. No, we shouldn't, like, we absolutely shouldn't. And I think, God, I couldn't be doing the stand-up I'm and talking about the things I'm talking about now with the experience that I didn't have. Oh. When, and the same for acting. You bring so much to a character when you've had those years, you know, so, and you, you only get better, you know. that's Absolutely. So uh, it, I keep hearing from people that apparently that your 40s are, like, the best era well um i've only been 40 for four or five months um so i'll let you know about that <laughs> like i will let you okay. know um, yeah. it, i think the best thing that i've i think this happened as i got closer to my 40s anyway i just don't care you know i yeah. do care about things of course but what my friends and family think of me um but if somebody doesn't want to hire me or if something bad happens i'm like ah I've been through enough. I can go through this again. I can go through whatever, you know. So yeah, it's... wouldn't it be so sad if you went through your whole life being like, oh, now I'm 40, <gasps> now I'm 45, <gasps> now I'm 50. Like, what? I mean, what kind of a life is that to, to lead, really? I know. And just, you can have fun at any age. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, so I don't intend to stop dressing like a 10-year-old just because I'm, like, older. I want to be that batty old lady in my 70s and 80s. Like wear all the vintage clothes, yeah. all of the beads, just being eccentric. I'm I'm kind of working my way towards that. What about you, Dev? Where do you see yourself? Like seventies and eighties. What what's uh old lady Dev doing then? Oh, uh, probably just a massive child. I feel like I'm regressing. Uh, the more I, the older I get, I just regress more and more. Uh, I just take myself less and less seriously, which is great. So probably on a trampoline somewhere in a ball pit, you know, <laughs> going to some kind of like granny rave, um, something like that. I hope. Oh my god, Kat, I hope. I will see you at the granny rave. Um, granny rave. We might need help out of the ball pit. Are you know, bad hips and all? <laughs> we might, we might, we might. But listen, do you know what though? Actually, you say that, but like I think our generation, you know, we're probably going to live beyond hopefully you know our 80s and and sort of 90s and uh didn't they say that the first person to live to like 120 has already been born or something whoa did i just make that up did i just make that up let's just say it's a true <laughs> fact true facts here in hot pod time machine 
<laughs> true facts no it was something like maybe it wasn't 120 but it was something wow. like quite significant maybe it was 200 oh god we really <laughs> you know what? Check. let's just go we, for 250 why not let's just go for 250 no but but it is something quite significant actually i don't know how old the oldest person is maybe 114 Ooh. i'm really plucking figures out of the air here well for those listening if you want to correct <laughs> us in the comments <laughs> And please, please tell us. Please, do. please correct us in the comments. Um, Deb, I'm starting a new thing at the end of Hot Pod Time Machine. Um, I I'm gonna ask now. You're you're gonna you're the first person of this new season, so I've got <gasps> nothing to kind of go by here. But you're gonna start this off. It's gonna be a chain okay. of wonderful tips and advice. So at the end right. of every podcast, uh, from here on in, I'm going to ask my guest. Um, to give the next guest some tips or an ad- a piece of advice that you received that you just loved or something that you've learned along the way that they might be able to use, regardless of age, career, whatever. Just, okay, okay, this is a good good one. Okay, be a hot mess. That is from one of my um, acting teachers. Embrace it. Embrace your hot mess. Don't hide it just revel in it enjoy it and and fucking own it i love that deb thank you so much yeah. I've, I've loved this what a good uh, first oh, episode good. of the new season yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't wait to see you again we're gonna i'm gonna practice my my e-news uh kind of like thing we're gonna like i don't know what to do like and i'm i'm quite short as well i think i'm shorter than you i'm definitely more goblin like that's for sure. <laughs> so, so. Oh, I don't think I'd describe you as goblin like, but if you don't romance Lazelle, then I might. Oh yeah, okay. Well, you said you like my scent. That's a good start. So. That's a good start, but it's just a start. Remember, I was a bit sassy with Lazelle, and Lazelle was like, "Oh, see, my... like the the answers back." I was like, "All right, hold on, all right." Yeah, yeah, you got. Yeah, she's a she's a she's a funny <laughs> she's a funny producer, doesn't she? I'll let you know how it goes next time. Next time I see you. Uh might have romanced them already so we'll let you know but um yeah. Deb, before i go do you want to promote anything i know you're on twitch streaming yeah you can find me on twitch uh deborah wild you can find me on tiktok deborah wild uh it's pretty much all the socials but i'm probably most active on on tiktok and uh yeah we stream boulders gate uh every week uh on twitch and other stuff that i can't talk about yet but you know we'll find out about those watch this space go follow dev on twitch and tiktok and all the stuff um thank you very much dev um this <laughs> has been hot pod time machine i've been clear this has been dever wild and we'll see you again soon take care bye hot pod time machine.